Let's ask ourselves, if your car can see better than you, and if it can think faster than you, then wouldn't it make sense that your car can drive better than you? This is the core of Tesla's new direction with their full self-driving technology. Instead of trying to read information from sonar and radar sensors, and then layering that on top of camera information to form some ultra 4D map, the car just sees, thinks, and drives. The exact same as a person, only much better. Hey Elonites and Musketeers, welcome to the Tesla space where we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk. As we get closer and closer to the long-awaited feature-complete version of Tesla's full self-driving software, we are seeing the company really hone in on how exactly this system is going to accomplish the goal that Tesla has set out, which is to have a car that drives autonomously in any location in any scenario with zero driver intervention required. To really achieve that master plan of full autonomy, the car has to be so good at operating that you could literally remove the steering wheel and have nothing to worry about. It's no small feat to accomplish, that is for sure, and so far this feature is long overdue from the original timeline that Elon was giving us just two or three years ago. Luckily for us, here is spring of 2021. We know that Tesla is getting close. We can see the new FSD beta system working in the real world and it's doing well. It's not perfect yet, but we've seen enough to get really excited about where this can go in the coming year. And with everything we learned from Tesla's Q1 releases, we know that the direction that full self-driving is going in this year is called pure vision. And that means Tesla are making major steps with artificial intelligence that are going to blow people's minds when they're fully realized. The strategy so far from Tesla has been to use a combination of radar, sonar, and camera vision to build a model of the car's surroundings that it can use to make decisions about where it can and can't drive at any given time. The general goal of full self-driving is to find the path with the least chance of hitting anything, which is a solid goal to have for a car. And most other modern cars now have some combination of radar and cameras that serve the same basic goal but other cars go about this process in a much more simplified way than Tesla. For more advanced cruise control systems, radar is used to judge the size, distance, and speed of objects around the car. With data from radar, the car can match the speed of another car that it's following, it can back up without hitting stuff, it can detect if a crash is about to happen and stomp the brakes to try and avoid it. So radar can kinda see but it doesn't see details, just numbers. It can tell there is something in the road that is five feet high and 10 feet away and moving five miles per hour. And that's why Tesla uses cameras, so they can see that level of detail that the human eye can see and radar can't. And Tesla's cameras are hooked into their machine learning neural net that is applying labels to things that Tesla cars are seeing out on the road. So working in combination with radar, now the Tesla can see that there is a person in the road. They're five feet tall, they're 10 feet away and moving towards the car at five miles per hour. And that's basically the way you would expect a robot car to drive in a very calculating manner based on data and numbers. But that's not how people drive. When we're out on the roads, we're not trying to calculate the exact distances between our car and the other cars. We're not trying to calculate the speed of the other vehicles. We're just looking out for anything that might be dangerous or might get in our way. Maybe this is just me, but I'm never trying to figure out how far away another car is on the road. I'm just registering that it's either close, far, or too close. Anything that falls in the category of too close, I worry about. Same with speed, it doesn't matter exactly how fast another car is going, they're either going a normal speed, too fast, or too slow. I make all of these decisions based on what my eyes can see in front of me, and that's not to say people are the gold standard for how to drive, not even close. We suck at this most of the time, but we do good enough, and that's with just two eyes that can only look in one direction and with all of our constant distractions. So if a car has eight eyes that are seeing in every direction at once and never get tired or distracted or stoned, then surely a car can do a much better job at driving than a human based off just that alone. Now this is the mindset that Elon and Tesla are in right now, getting the cars to drive more like people, just better. That means artificial intelligence becomes very important. 
Then we can move away from computer-based decision-making that is relying on written code to make decisions. Running scripts like if speed equals this and distance equals this, then take this action. Or if this happens, then do that. Pretty much all software is based on this kind of language. The problem when it comes to driving is that this doesn't give the car any room to improvise or problem solve or think outside of the box of pre-programmed thoughts that it has already been given. If a Tesla is cruising down the road, seeing the world, making assumptions based on what it's already learned, then if you have some guy who's drunk as a skunk just stumbling and weaving down the sidewalk, then the car can identify that and say, hey, there's something wrong with that guy. He might fall into the road. Be prepared for that to happen just in case. Maybe slow down a bit and give him some extra room. The same kind of assumption that a person driving a car would make. Radar can't do that. It can only react once the drunk guy has stumbled out into traffic. Quick interruption here to invite you to all subscribe to our weekly Tesla Space newsletter. We deliver all the updates on Tesla, SpaceX, Elon Musk, and of course Neuralink in a quick, fun, and easy to read package. Link to sign up is in the description below. It's the teslaspace.com. And once you sign up, be sure to check your promotions tab to make sure our emails are going to your main inbox. Now back to radar. All of this to say radar isn't useless and that's where things start to get tricky here because Elon is talking about removing radar entirely from the full self-driving system. Radar can do a couple of things that vision can't do whether that's human vision or camera vision. The biggest advantage being that radar can see through things like fog, snow, heavy rain, and dust. It can see at night with no lights on. Radar can even see around large, solid objects by bouncing the signal off hard surfaces like the road. Using this method, a radar sensor can see past the car ahead of you and get a reading two or even three cars ahead. Radar is probably better for emergency collision avoidance because you get those exact numbers for speed and distance that could be more useful for emergency braking. But to be honest, I don't know. Then there are some well-known downsides to cameras that need to be overcome. For one, they can be easily obstructed, like if mud or dirt covers the window that the camera is looking through, then it becomes useless. Sometimes the camera just can't see as well as we'd expect it to, like with Tesla's whole deep rain AI thing. That's the system that controls the auto windshield wipers by looking at how much rain is on the windshield and adjusting wiper speed according to what the camera sees, which we know is not very good on a Tesla. It is getting better for sure. It used to be total garbage, now it's fine, but still not as good as other cars that don't try and use cameras for this job. So there are still kinks that need to be worked out. Then there's that frequently asked question of would a self-driving car crash itself and possibly kill the driver to avoid hitting a person? Well, yeah, I guess it would. And that's the exact same thing a human driver would probably do as well. If you're driving down the street and a little kid jumps out into the road, you're not going to be able to do a split second risk assessment and make a choice about self-preservation or whatever. You just swerve to avoid the kid, unless you're a psycho. A Tesla would do the exact same thing, just with a faster reaction time. Everything the car sees has a weight attached to it, which allows the car to prioritize. So if a basketball bounces into the road, then the car will know that's just a ball. It's not alive, avoid hitting it if possible, but don't swerve into oncoming traffic over it. In theory, a pedestrian would have the highest weight attached, avoid hitting at all costs. So yeah, the Tesla would swerve into oncoming traffic to avoid a little kid because two people inside cars have a better chance at surviving a collision than car versus child. What gets really interesting to think about is what if the oncoming vehicle is also a self-driving Tesla? Then in theory, at the same time that your car is seeing the kid and swerving to avoid, the oncoming car is thinking a kid just jumped in front of that car. It's going to swerve to avoid that. I need to get out of the way or break to take some kind of action to minimize this collision that's about to happen. One self-driving car on its own can make us more safe, but when we get to multiple self-driving cars all on the road working together, then the safety net gets bigger and tighter and eventually becomes almost unbreakable. Sorry, that's a bit of a tangent, but I think that's the best way to talk about what Tesla Pure Vision is really doing. Because from a technical standpoint, we don't really know how this works. And even if someone could explain the technical side, we'd never understand what they were saying because most of us aren't artificial intelligence specialists. And that's how we need to start thinking of Tesla in this year and years to come as AI specialists. One of the standout quotes from Elon of the Q1 earnings call 
was when he said, although right now people think of Tesla as a car company or as an energy company, I think long term people will think of Tesla as much as an AI robotics company as we are a car company or an energy company. I think we are developing one of the strongest hardware and software AI teams in the world. And I think that's going to be a running theme for Tesla this year. They've already got cars figured out for now. The Model Y is amazing and it's selling like hotcakes. Now we shift the focus to the next dimension, AI. So we're expecting Tesla's full self-driving beta to go to pure vision with the next update to version nine. And that should be happening in May or June of this year. But let's remember to manage expectations with these timelines. They often turn out to be wrong. And again, we expect that with the version nine update, we'll also see an option rolled out to full self-driving buyers for everyone to try out the new beta software if they choose. Keeping in mind that this is not a feature complete software and people who use it are still responsible for monitoring the car and intervening if something bad is about to happen. So I imagine most people who paid for FSD will want to take that up as soon as they can. This rollout is supposedly going to be followed up by a Tesla AI day sometime in July. I don't know how official that really is. As far as I can tell, Elon only mentioned it once in a reply to a tweet. Someone asked him, when is Tesla AI day? And Elon said, sometime in July. So if we assume that this is a real thing, then I would also assume that July is when we finally get a thorough explanation from Tesla about how full self-driving is working, what it's doing, and where they see this all going over the course of the next few years. It is really all exciting stuff, and I can't wait to see where we end up with all of this by the end of the year. Maybe we can get to real autonomy with zero driver interventions. Let us know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Quick reminder to sign up for our newsletter for more Tesla news and speculation. There's a link down below. Again, if you do sign up, be sure to check your various inboxes and move us over to the main inbox so your valuable Tesla space info doesn't get mixed in with the spam or promotions. If you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.